fun. Hi, John. Gavin. Hi, Ada. Why, why? Welcome, Hi. welcome to the three of you. We have a. Um, a, a perfect example of a global forum right here in that we have major, we have represented major companies from three continents, ba companies based in three continents. Yes. We're going to talk about the subject of connected devices and um, I want to share with all of you that I, I want to sort of make sure that we go very high and that we go specific and that I want to hear about this topic of connected, connected devices, what it means, but also what each of your three important companies uh, are, are doing in that regard. Um, there's almost nobody better in the world of technology to explain what something means than John Chambers. So John, uh, I want to ask you to, to give everybody the, a brief overview of what we hear about connected devices, the Internet of Things, all the time, but what is it? In our program material, we talked about there being 25 billion connected devices by, I believe, 2025. Your thoughts? So uh, first, just to give you a feeling for the sizing, and we're pretty good about getting market transitions right, other things we don't do as well. Hmm. I don't think it'll be 25 billion devices by 2025. I think it will be 500 billion devices. And the issue here is not about connectivity. It's about how you can connect, do connectivity to change business or government or healthcare process. Uh, you will see every company in this room be a digital company, not in 10 years, but in five. Many of us will trip along the way. 40% of us will not exist in a meaningful way in 10 years, and it will be because of a mis-execution or missing the opportunity in the next two to three years. Hang on, excuse me, you just said something very significant. 40% 40% of the companies represented in this room, including us, if we don't transition, will not be here in a meaningful way, you said. That means you'll be a, a, the, the, those 40% will be unimportant, irrelevant companies. Well, we talked earlier about the Fortune 500 and how it's evolved. As every company becomes a digital company, mm. you're going to have to not change your technology. And I thought Jenny and John hit that pretty good. It is about the Internet of Everything that ties it together with mobility and cloud. But when you talk to government leaders, you talk to them in terms of what does it mean to a country. It's GDP growth of 1% to 3% per year. For France, it's a million incremental jobs. It's changing the skill sets that are needed for the jobs of the future. For Modi, it's the ability to digitize his country and become a manufacturing powerhouse and to reskill India for new innovation. So what you're talking about is something that is the most revolutionary change that high tech's ever gone through, probably five to ten times of the impact to date. And another thing each of us or each of the leaders will face is it's very possible if we don't change our organization structure, our competitors will be a billion dollar companies with a CEO and only a CIO. Everything else will be outsourced. <laughs> so what this technology does is allow for changing of business models, different market transitions, don't do the same thing too long as the earlier speakers alluded to, and how do you reinvent yourself as a company and group? Okay. Opportunity, tremendous disruption, but also an opportunity for tremendous opportunities. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to pause there, and, and, and why, why I'd like for you to tell everybody what connectivity means to Lenovo and how Lenovo differentiates itself with connectivity. Uh, <clears throat> with a, a smart connectivity, so uh, I think we can make our devices the most smart. <laughs> so, uh, uh, that, uh, can, um, <clears throat> so our devices, uh, so all kinds of devices, your PC, your smartphone, uh, your smart TV, uh, will become your personal uh, assistant, uh, your personal uh, information center, uh, the extension of your personal uh, capability and the window uh, to connect you to the outside the world and uh, to manage uh, your personal life. Uh, so actually we have defined uh, five uh, uh, aspects uh, to focus on. Uh, so the first is uh, how to connect your device with the people. Uh, so that should be connected uh, more naturally. Uh, so talking, uh, writing, uh, gesture will become more uh, popular uh, uh, interaction uh, between uh, device and, uh, and the people. Uh, so uh, uh, device, the second is uh, device and the network. Uh, so your device uh, should be uh, not just the always on, uh, but also uh, should be connected to the uh, uh, network faster, safer, uh, and cheaper. Uh, so uh, that's uh, what we should uh, focus on. The third one is device and the device. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> not only the smart devices uh, should be connected uh, smartly. Uh, so your smartphone and your uh, PC should uh, uh, easily uh, to be connected and exchange the uh, data and the in information. So actually, Lenovo, we have a, 
uh, app called uh, Share It. Uh, so uh, even without any network, it uh, can help uh, two devices uh, to be connected and uh, to uh, share the information. But not just that. Uh, so even uh, for those uh, traditional uh, home appliances, uh, your uh, air condition, uh, your uh, humi humidifier, uh, your uh, so in, in China we have the puro purify, <laughs> so to clean the the, the air. Uh, so th those kind of uh, devices should be connected to your smart connect smart devices, your your phone, your PC. Uh, Excuse me, I'm sure you all hope that in the, in the time frame that John was talking about that you no longer need the air purifiers in China. I hopefully, hopefully. Hope those will yeah, go away. Yeah. So Please. Ten, 10 years later, so <laughs> it will be uh, cleaned. Uh, uh, so all these uh, home uh, appliances uh, uh, should be connected to your smart devices. And uh, definitely, uh, so those sensors uh, to, to, to monitor your temperature, your uh, humidity, your uh, uh, air, uh, cleaning level, uh, so it should be connected to your uh, uh, smart devices, uh, so that uh, uh, devices can help you uh, to to automatically uh, adjust the temperature, humidity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and let me ask you: right now, the major devices that Lenovo sells are are computers, smartphones, mm -hmm. and servers. Will you make these other devices, or will you work with other people who make them? We definitely will not make uh, all of them. Uh, so we will work with others, uh, other companies to uh, uh, to make it happen. Uh, so we probably will give a uh, uh, develop a kit to to those uh, uh, home appliance companies uh, to make sure so we can be uh, connected uh, smartly. Uh, so actually, this uh, this is the third one. The the first one is how to connect uh, your device with. Uh, uh, your personal data. Uh, so no matter uh, where you generate it, you store that, so you can get it easily. Uh, so on uh, each of your, your, your uh, devices. Uh, so now we have an app called uh, Richit. Uh, so you only need to do, uh, to ask it. Uh, so can you uh, <coughs> give me uh, the picture I took in our uh, last fortune uh, forum in Chengdu? Automatically, uh, the picture will uh, pop up. Uh, so that's a, a kind of a smart uh, connection between a device and your uh, personal data. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the last one is uh, how to connect your device with the, uh, the services. Uh, so uh, smoothly. Uh, so with that kind of uh, smart connectivity, uh, so you can uh, enjoy the one-stop uh, service. Uh, so you can. So in the future, uh, you only need to talk to your smartphone. Uh, I want to book a ticket to San Francisco uh, uh, on uh, uh, November uh, 2nd. So that will help you. Uh, so actually today we have uh, integrated the uh, uh, App Store uh, gaming uh, uh, center uh, with our smartphone. Uh, so that, that can help uh, uh, people to use those applications. Good. Now, now, Gavin, I think of BT, I think of British Telecom, the, the phone company. Uh, educate the room, if you would, a little bit on, on how you've moved beyond that. Well, we're, uh, we're very different these days. Uh, we serve customers in 170 countries around the world. So it's a very I would say that's global. That's pretty international. Um, the heart of the business remains in the UK, where we are uh, the, what you would call the incumbent uh, operator. Um, been around for 170 years, so uh, we've reinvented ourselves many times over that that uh, uh, that period ourselves. And you have uh, you have Wells Fargo beaten by a few years, if exactly. I heard John Exactly, they're mere correctly. youngsters, Adam. I yeah. would say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're at our the heart of our business. We're a network business um, fundamentally. Um, we've been uh, uh, changing things over the last couple of years. We've had a very strong base in, in fixed networks. We've invested heavily behind fiber, uh, but we would always had, well, recent, for the last 10, 15 years or so, we've had a gap in, in mobile. Uh, we used to have a mobile arm, but we divested it in around the turn of the century. So we've been looking for the opportunity to, to fill that gap, itch, scratch that itch, as it were. So we've just, uh, we're in the process of um, buying the biggest uh, mobility wireless company in the UK, EE, which was formed out of, uh, um, to the number three and the number four player about three or four years ago. So that's, that acquisition is, is ongoing at the moment. We've got regulatory clearance through the CMA. We hope to complete that uh, 
uh, imminently. But it, with that, it'll allow us to create a, a seamless network working across fixed and wireless. Uh, and it's, at its heart, that is absolutely fundamental to what's going to happen, I think, with the Internet of Things. Just so I'm clear, what are you doing in these 169 other countries? Um, in, in many countries, we own network. Um, in, in others, we're riding over other people's network. Uh, it depends. Um, we're particularly strong in continental Europe. We're a, a good business here in the U.S., serving many customers here. Indeed, I'm, I'm hopeful. In fact, I know a few of them are here in the room today. Uh, and then um, uh, Asia Pacific is also very strong for us. You know, what's interesting, though, Adam, if you pull it together, uh, we're all saying the same thing a little bit different ways. Companies who are going to lead in the future, first, you have to get market transitions right. They can be technology. They can be business models. Secondly, you can't stay doing the same thing too long. The right thing too long, you've got to reinvent yourself, bring it back into your core. The third is you have to reinvent yourself as leaders or organization structures. And the fourth, to what the earlier panel said, you've got to tie this together with your customer expectations. Every one of us are going through rapid transformation. And I'd argue that the same is true for everyone in this room. The key is, do you move quick enough, and do you have the courage to change before it becomes obvious? Once it's obvious, it's too late. Well, let me, let me play devil's advocate with you. Each of your companies has, has gone through transformations and has broadened and diversified its, its product lines, but each of you is making most of your money and most of your sales and most, of it, most or all of your profits from very similar products to what you were doing X number of years ago. Now, I'm going to disagree for all right. three of us, but I'll take the first crack. <laughs> uh, I'm right behind you, Joe. <laughs> exactly. Well, I know where you're going to go, too. You know, and he's transformed his company. We have done the same. Uh, most companies in an industry make 90% of their profits, exactly where you're going, uh, from the same two or three products they've had forever. Uh, we are in number one and number two in 18 major product areas that we're closing on, number one in 12 of them, usually 40 to 70% market share. Uh, we are in collaboration. We are in security. We are in cloud. We are in mobility. Uh, a whole different alignment in terms of the resources. And that speaks to each one of us. It doesn't matter if we're an automotive company, a major service provider, a major uh, producer of technology devices, whether it's the PCs or servers or others. If you don't constantly reinvent and move into new profit streams, then you're not going to be successful. Your shareholders aren't going to like it. You aren't going to see the profit growth you need, your margins will be under pressure. This is why it comes back to your first question. It's about a digital world. All of us are saying it differently, what that means to our future. If I'm, go ahead, why, why, please. Yeah, so I, uh, I cannot agree more. So uh, for, uh, no company can uh, be successful if uh, uh, they only uh, stay still. So to, to protect their, their old business, uh, not try to transform themselves, not try to, to, to find the new area uh, to expand. Uh, so this uh, is exactly the, the Lenovo's situation. Uh, so uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, we were just a uh, 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 Chinese local co uh, company with a 3 billion uh, business. Uh, but uh, <coughs> we, we, uh, we understood. So we, we, we had already hit the, 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 the ceiling. Uh, so we, we, we must go uh, overseas to become a global player. So we uh, decided to buy IBM uh, PC business and to become a pure uh, global company. Uh, so after we, we, we bought that, the first step, we must integrate that. Uh, but uh, after we succeed on that, we immediately started to think about how to expand. So uh, the, IBM only uh, focused on the commercial side. We must expand our consumer business. Uh, so over uh, five or six year uh, development, now we have become the number one in the, in, in the consumer PC area. Uh, now we are thinking about uh, how to expand uh, into next stage. So that's why last year we bought uh, uh, IBM server business. We bought uh, Motorola uh, mobility uh, business. Uh, so those two businesses will become our uh, two uh, new uh, growth engines. Uh, so excuse me, I should ask you, what are you going to buy next? <laughs> Definitely not a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for once, I have no, no response to that <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, I, Gavin, I, I think you would like to get in on the well, argument I, I, I started with being, John. Uh, yeah. I, I completely agree. Um, you introduced us as a telephone company, I think. Uh, around 10% of our revenues are from voice. Uh, and we've reinvented ourselves, as I say, many times uh, over, the, over the years, most recently in in uh, going to sports broadcasting uh, and really challenging the incumbent there. 
Uh, and in many ways, that's uh, going back to the, the future, if, if you like. If you look at what happened originally when telecom networks were first created um, back in the, uh, the 1800s, nobody thought they'd be used for, or there'd be enough use for, for voice. So originally, they were used to convey content. So you can, in London, for example, the, uh, they were used originally to um, broadcast from theatres. So you could listen in in the afternoon and, and hear plays. <laughs> and they were used for that before they were used in mass for voice, which was quite interesting. So, you know, it is about reinvention. It's all about timing and um, ensuring that you're always staying up to date and indeed ahead of your customers' needs. Would you talk a little bit about the, one, of the, one of the buzzwords with connected devices is the connected home. What, what, what does this mean to BT? What is the opportunity? Well, I think it's, it is... I think we need to, to understand it in the whole Internet of Things idea. It's a relatively small part of it, I think. So, Excuse me, the home part is? Yeah. I think if you look at where the opportunities lie, I would suggest at least 80% of them are outside of the home, and particularly in the B2B areas where the automation uh, of many, of, um, uh, many industries, I think, is, is primed to take off uh, behind the Internet of Things. But to, to go back to your question, it is, it's a pivotal opportunity for us because we've got a very big uh, and growing consumer business. Uh, it's built around data, it's built around connectivity, uh, and ensuring that customers can uh, optimize that and, and, and indeed use it in as many ways as possible is, is fundamental to our strategy. So two things in particular are critical from our perspective. One is it's got to be open um, so that it's easy to connect a range of different devices to. And when you say it, you mean the network? Yeah, uh, and the, um, the access to that network, uh -huh. our, our, our hub, per se. So it's got to be open, easy to connect, and security is critical. Um, one of the, the things that is, uh, concerns me most about how things are developing is that I, I'm not completely convinced that we're thinking sufficiently around security and the, and the risk to our, our customers. Uh, I'm talking collectively here. Well, and, and you, have, you have plenty to say about that. I do, but you know, the, the major topic, if I can take a step back, is for each of us in this room as we think about our businesses, think about it from a government leader's perspective. And if governments are moving with tremendous speed, our individual businesses have to move faster. Cameron in the UK, he clearly understands this is an opportunity for the UK to lead in innovation. He understands that with a digital economy, he can change innovation in startups. He understands it's his chance to address the inequality of incomes between the North and the South, Manchester and Birmingham. He knows he's got to reskill our workforce and make the transitions. Sure. Alain in France, same thing. One to three points of GDP growth, a million new jobs in three years, partner with the business community. A socialistic government partnering with the business community. Go <laughs> figure. Number two in the world in startups at the Consumer Electronics Show, France. And all of a sudden, you see a transition going on. Modi in India, 1.3 billion people. Digital country, big time. You want to bet on an emerging market, bet on India. John, they will drive this. It's so, it's so interesting how um, iconoclastic you're being. My assumption would be that most people, the last thing most people in this room want to talk about is government. You know, they, they, don't, they don't think of government as leading any of this. Their dynamic companies are leading all of this, not prime sure. ministers and presidents. So I know you're baiting me, and, <laughs> and I'm going to go for it, uh, which is basically if governments are leading and business is following, we've got a different problem. Watch what Gavin is doing in uh, UK, how he's positioning his country, company for where the business will be in the future, not the past. And as businesses, if we don't think, if we don't transform ourselves in two years, three at most, that we will be also runs, we shouldn't kid ourselves. I have no competitors from 15 to 20 years ago. They're gone. From 10 to 15 years tell, ago. Tell, remind everybody the names of your competitors. From well, I think, I think you won't remember them for obvious reasons. And that's the same thing could happen to Cisco if we don't change. Great companies, Alcatel, Lucent, Nortel, a shadow of what they did before. The same thing will be true whether you're a finance industry, a great company like Wells Fargo, a great company like Cisco, or BT, or Lenovo, if we don't change. This transition inflection point we've talked about for eight years, it is now occurring in the last 12 months. And we've got to get ahead of it. When we poll, and you all have done the polling too from Fortune, you talk to the executives of the companies in this room, and they would say that out of the CEOs in this room, including ourselves, 
Only about 26% of us even have a plan that they think might work for digitization. So I think you've got to view this as the ultimate change in technology. Every company becomes a digital company. You talk to John or Jeff at GE, they are a technology company first. Quote, a global conglomerate of manufacturing is a second. B -b before I, I'm not going to bait you anymore, but before I, before I change the subject, so, uh, you were one of the chief spokespeople 15 years ago for what the meaning of the rise of the internet was going to be. Yes. So two-part question, is, is the internet itself mature the network is it mature and as this are these connected devices that we're talking about is that the new opportunity is that a similar opportunity to what the growth of the network was 15 years ago it is 10 maybe 15 times the potential in, uh, in terms of do of revenue revenue dollars however you want to measure it we put it at 19 trillion around the world in profits or cost savings that's the U.S. economy plus some over 10 years. That's 1% to 3% on GDP growth within it. And so it's the ability to translate this opportunity back to what it means to individual business. Where you alluded, it kills me being a Republican saying this, but <laughs> President Clinton got it right. He said the information age could change this country. He rode that horse remarkably well. He brought business as a partnership to the government. 18% uh, growth in uh, GDP, 17% growth in real per capita income, 16% growth uh, in terms of uh, jobs created. I think it's about 22 million jobs were created in six years. You're about to see the same thing going on. And this is where I think Modi gets it. This is where Elon gets it. Yet it's not even a topic in today's presidential debate. Nobody's even asked a basic question. What's your, your strategy for this country from technology? I mean, give me a break. Elon could lecture us out of France about his strategy. Oh. So could Modi. So could Putin, by the way. You know, there's a tradition in each administration yeah. of having a, a cabinet secretary from the opposite party in the, uh, in, in the administration. Are you positioning yourself for a, for no, a post no, in, I, in a Clinton administration? I, I'm clearly expecting the Republicans to win unless we mess it up, which we are fully capable of doing. <laughs> fully capable of doing. But you see the same thing in the UK, Gavin. Kind of you know, share with the room how you see this evolving, because your revenues, 90% used to be voice. Today, it's at most 10. Yeah. Your profits are probably pretty small there. You've completely transformed your company, but your country's transforming. I think you've put your finger on it, John. Um, Certainly, government and the corporate sector have to work hand in hand. It's, it's not one or the other. Uh, if, if one leads the other and gets out of step with each other, then for whatever reason, the, 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 uh, the, out, the outcome is not a, a good one for the, the country. It's not a good one for shareholders. It's not a good one for customers. So it is around partnership. You have to have people in government who recognize you know, the, the potential of the internet and that we're actually, it's still relatively young uh, relative to what it can mean to, to the way we live our lives. So, you know, I think the current uh, government in the UK does get that. I think they've created the right sort of conditions. Um, but it's, um, there's still a long way to go. Now, I'm going to come to you all in a, in a moment unless somebody insists on getting in sooner, in which case I'd be delighted to recognize you. Why, why? Would, would, uh, would you like to talk about the, the, the government in China or would you like to pass on that question? Uh, definitely, I believe uh, the government uh, has its role uh, to uh, uh, stimulate the, 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 the industry. Uh, so, uh, for example, the Chinese government also recently very much encouraged the innovation, very uh, much encouraged the uh, uh, entrepreneurship or startup company. So many companies uh, are generated or created, but, but uh, probably uh, only a few can survive. Uh, so 80%, uh, 90% will, will die. Uh, but um, uh, it's, it's still the, the, the government's rule. Uh, so now you can see more and more uh, high-tech companies uh, uh, are created uh, so in, in, in China. So we, uh, and uh, our R&D expense has been uh, increased year, year over year. Uh, so that I don't want to miss an opportunity to, to take advantage of the fact that you're visiting us from China to ask you for your outlook on your own country. I know you're a global player. Last week, Tim Cook, your competitor, said everything is great in China for Apple. Your, your reaction to that? Uh, I hope everybody will, will like uh, Apple, uh, but unfortunately it's not. <laughs> so, uh, so, I, I, so because their product is uh, mainly a premium uh, product. And, uh, right. Uh, so, uh, you know, in China, more and more middle-class uh, people that want to buy the, the, the premium uh, product. Uh, so, 
But uh, I, I think, uh, uh, generally speaking, in many industries, uh, including uh, PC and the smartphone, uh, as a total, uh, so actually the the market become more uh, uh, moderate. Uh, so actually, PC uh, uh, declined, uh, the, but the smartphone uh, is flat. Uh, uh, so I think the mainstream and the low end. Uh, 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 so uh, we we have seen the. Uh, uh, saturated. Uh, we have seen the saturated. Uh, so actually, in the PC and the smartphone area, so China is more like uh, uh, mature markets. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. If I can you know, piggyback on what Wawa said, I actually thought President Xi's uh, comments he made his policy speech interesting enough in Seattle on Microsoft. You were, were on the there. Money. Yes, and I think a number of people in this room were. Uh, secondly, I, I think the people who are too pessimistic on China will be proved wrong once again. China has a million, a, a, an ability to regenerate itself at a very fast pace. Mm -hmm. And the willingness of business and government to work together, Jenny said it earlier about strategic partnerships. Uh, you know, seven of us announced strategic partnerships with key Chinese companies in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And so I actually think that China will once again get through this very, very effectively. And uh, I'm actually pretty optimistic yeah. about the future within so, China. So, it depends more on our government relations than it does economically for many of us. So definitely, we cannot uh, be uh, too optimistic, but we, we, we shouldn't be too uh, pessimistic uh, as well. Uh, so the se six or seven percent year on year GDP growth uh, is still very decent growth. Pretty so, good. Uh, we yeah, would uh, take it in the United States. <laughs> so uh, uh, every year, uh, 800, uh, 800 billion uh, increase on the GDP. So that's uh, yeah. that's uh, pretty big. Let's let's hear from your let's hear from your peers. Well, or 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 one of my colleagues, if not one of your peers, <laughs> <laughs> Alan. Uh, I I just want to suggest that John might want to make an amendment on something he said at the very outset. He said 40 percent of the people in this room. Uh, the, the companies wouldn't be around in 10 years. I accept that the trends show that 40% of companies out there won't be around in 10 years, but I'd like to think the ones in this room who had the wisdom to attend the Global <laughs> Forum will have a better than average shot. <laughs> As a result of having attended this That's conference, of course. Yeah. But you know, your, your, your point is a fair one, and I'm not kissing up to you, although I'm not above that when appropriate. <laughs> we have the no real, IT budget. Yeah, John. I know that. <laughs> but the real issue here is the people in this room are here because they get this inflection points that's happening. We get that if we don't change, we get left behind. So I do think those organizations that are being realistic, there's a huge market transition occurring here. It is survival for us. Our most likely competitors are not our competitors of the past. If you don't reinvent yourself, you're going to get crushed in the future, and you've got to listen to your customers on that transition. But at the heart of it, everyone becomes a technology company. So I think the attendees probably are a step ahead and would have a higher thing. And I would have, would have said that even without the prompting. I understand. Over here, please. Uh, yeah, hi, Jeff Colvin with Fortune. Uh, on the subject of Internet of Things and John's prediction of 500 billion connected devices, the issue arises, okay, how are we going to make money on this? I mean, there is obviously money to be made in the connecting of the devices, and both John and Gavin uh, can help in that business. Why, why is it a different business? But also, we know that the connecting is really going to be a small proportion of the total money to be made in all of this. So I want to ask all of you, okay, then where is the real money going to be made, and how are you going to be in it? Gavin, I guess you, I'm guessing you're going to take issue with with the premise of Jeff's question: the connecting not being the big bucks. Uh, well, it's it's some decent bucks, though. I think decent. I'd be quite happy to uh, <laughs> to make a turn in there. But I think I think you're right. Uh, I think when it comes to you know the, the sheer size of the opportunity, it's more than simply co the, the connecting itself. Um, in terms of how people will make money, I think there are many different ways. Simply taking failure and waste and automating systems will create a lot of value, for example. I think in healthcare, there are huge opportunities. Largely manual processes uh, at the moment will be able to be replaced by automated processes. I think that's a, there's a big opportunity there. Um, uh, elsewhere, obviously cars uh, are going to, to be completely transformed, indeed already starting to be uh, transformed in that area. So I, I think it'll just change business models and you know, there'll be a, a bunch of people who don't move with the times uh, and they will find themselves dying and then there'll be new companies emerging and, and taking on leadership. So um, I think people will make money out of it. Who, who will make the money, Weiwei? 
Well, we can make money. <laughs> <laughs> so we are actually not just talking about the connecting itself. We are talking about the uh, smart connectivity as a, uh, a char characteristic of our, our products, our smart uh, devices. Uh, so uh, if uh, uh, adding these uh, features or characteristics, so your, your, your device will become smarter, so uh, easy for uh, people to use. Uh, so uh, uh, the most services can uh, be accessed. So uh, that's uh, uh, why we uh, focus on the smart connectivity. Uh, to uh, innovate our devices. We have time for one quick question and a quick answer to it. Uh, yeah, my question is, you I'm know... Sorry, please uh, tell, us, tell us who you are. Uh, yeah, I'm Rajan Navani uh, from the Jetline Group from India. Uh, you know, we were, uh, in the earlier session, we heard about, you know, how technology companies are really changing consumer behavior very rapidly and significantly. And we heard of cognitive actually being the fourth dimension. I think uh, where you know we're talking of a response time of the consumer really becoming much smaller because it's already in front of you what you want. I think with connected devices, uh, is it would it really change even 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 that whole thing one step further where you would not even need to make any choice because mm. you know everything is just happening and and what will be the pace of this disruption of change from where we are today where we're still betting on just analytics and mobility as a foundation moving to cognitive moving to where you really need to do nothing i mean what might be the time frame to change that you're the you're you're the you're the well, we get more exposure to it than, than many. Uh, I think the time, uh, time frame, going back to the principle, there's an inflection point. I think it's going to be two to three years and you break away or you don't or you'll be having problems. Uh, I think actually the technology will actually be the easiest part here. It's how do we as organizations change our organization structure and our culture. Easy to say, hard to do. At Cisco, we changed 41% of our sales reps in two years because they had to change from selling routing and switching i.e. like voice to a different outcome. Uh, and we're a company that only has a 5% attrition rate. We took our engineering organization, turned it horizontal, uh, changed 24 of our top 92 leaders. Really hard for us to do given our culture, to focus on outcomes. And then it's all around speed of innovation. Speed of innovation, which is process-based. So to answer your question, a lot of what we're all building, $19 trillion is profits. There's going to be a lot of profits made here and a lot of disruption. But I think it will basically provide to the consumer or provide to the business answers to your questions before you even know to ask it. And then it's how you use this big data in a constructive way that, that determines your outcome. Is General, that what you thought? And we will have plenty of time in our, in our, in our networking and cocktail hours to, to continue the conversation. And I want to thank you three gentlemen for bringing a, a truly global conversation to our global forum. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll walk this way. Thank you.